Hi, my name is David Brown from David Brown Automotive. The company was started based on a lot of my historical experiences as it would be for most people. My background is one of uh, being involved and eventually running a big uh, uh, off-highway truck building company. That's where we built um, 55 uh, to 100 tonne gross vehicle weight uh, off-highway articulated vehicles. These were always built in relatively low volumes, high volumes for us, but low volumes for, uh, say, a car manufacturer. That experience taught me how to make things in low volume. But it was an experience with a, a, a Ferrari Daytona convertible on a classic car rally, which somebody kindly loaned me, and uh, I was looking forward to driving this car massively. I got into it on a very hot day in the south of France, and was uh, amazed to discover it didn't have air conditioning. Not amazed at all, but it didn't. I started to drive the car, and it looked beautiful. It looked stunning, but that's what it should, all it did do. It should have just stayed where it was. It was an awful thing to drive. It was heavy, relatively underpowered as well, in spite of the name it bore, and with a big clunky gearbox. Eventually, and mercifully, the gearbox jammed into second gear and the thing ground to a halt. I wasn't far from Nice Airport, so I went and hired a Peugeot 104, jumped into this cheap little hire car and was amazed by how good it was. And it just reminded me the massive difference in time between the 60s and, in this case, the 2010s, and the way in which cars had evolved and come on during that period. Part of me came away from that experience thinking, wouldn't it be nice to blend these two things together? The style of the 60s but the contemporary things that we take for granted today such as even just a good uh, heating system airflow air conditioning is a massive bonus on top of that the little Peugeot had that the Ferrari didn't all the things the other things the sound control the uh, the things that you take for granted in terms of locking the car and absolutely everything that you can think of have changed so dramatically so with the benefit of this low volume manufacturing experience and the experiences of that particular journey, I started to think about creating my own car. Originally, I was just going to do it for myself, but decided once we got into the process of designing the Speedback that um, this might be a car other people would uh, enjoy for exactly the same reasons as well. And the company was born from that. That was about five years ago and uh, today we're really proud in terms of what we've achieved. We achieved a great deal of the car that you see today. We achieved that within a very short time frame, within about a couple of years. But today to be able to move properly into production uh, and to add to the range the Mini Remastered, which is in essence a, a beautifully restored classic Mini with some additional things that give you, uh, uh, again, a fabulous uh, stereo set and uh, Bluetooth telephone, uh, some air conditioning as well that works. All of this stems from those long-term experiences blended with today's manufacturing processes, which are so different. The Speedback, for example, was after we produced the first clay model that was digitally scanned, it's scanned, so we had a reference point for every measurement on the car. The shut lines on the cars that we build today are beautiful. Each side is identical to the other side. A lot of the classic cars, believe you me, weren't. And with that comes the ability to repeat that quality on uh, a very, albeit small, but on a production basis. So today we've got two great products that we want to really capitalize on in terms of uh, building a beautiful, beautifully styled, beautifully manufactured vehicle that a lot of people can get great pleasure from. If I was to do another car in the future, it would be of a similar nature, so it would take a period of time from the past and um, but bring it into a contemporary way. Right now, I don't have plans for that. I have plans to deal with what we already have. The Speedback is obviously a much more expensive car, so um, even that uh, is going to limit the market that it can uh, be delivered to. But the people that like both cars um, buy into what we do, so they're buying into the Britishness of this thing, and they're buying into the really high quality, they're buying into, I think more than anything else, the emotion 
that uh, lies behind both cars. The Speedback is a genuine Grand Tour. It's a car that you can do a thousand miles, kilometers in and enjoy the journey. The Mini is similar, but the journeys are going to be shorter. Hashtag that we've got in a few places is life is a journey and we want people to enjoy that journey.